Frank's Red Hot is the perfect blend of flavor and heat. So you can use an entire bottle to make recipes like buffalo chicken dip or buffalo nachos. Or even things that don't start with buffalo. Frank's Red Hot. I put that shit on everything. Craig, y'all ready to podcast? On the road again. I hope the Cougs never have to go back on the road again. <laughs> they just lose and play mediocre defense. I hope the Cougs never have to play on the road again. Yeah. But of course they do. Actually. Yeah, they do. They have more road games. Three to end the season. <sighs> that was awesome. I like a good little shout out for Willie Nelson. And man, I saw lots of Willie Nelson pictures this last weekend. Yeah. The, Murals we gotta... and all kinds of shit. Yeah, it's funny. I, uh, I I wanted to hit with your theme, your Austin theme. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, so yeah, this... I've been I've been in Texas for four days. So yeah, and so this is podcast versus everyone with uh, Craig Powers, and I've been to yeah, Texas. That's that's your name. Yep. <laughs> um, I was going to say your name first this time. I don't know why. Um, and I'm with Jeff Newser, honorary that's Texan, me. for last week. Dude, you know how many times I said y'all today uh, while I was well, working with my students? Six. It was more than normal. Well, <laughs> I, more than typical. I say y'all pretty fairly regularly because I lived in Nashville for two years, and I think yeah. I think it's a great word. It is. A good I think word. it's better than you guys, which is what I grew up saying. Hey, you guys. Um, you guys. Guys. Yeah, at least mix. I, I can I can mix it up now. I say you guys and y'all kind of yeah. interchangeably so I, my my ex, my vocabulary is expanded yeah. you know y'all's inclusive as that's well, right so. it's i did see uh, i did see a woman wearing a shirt that kind of went through the different variations on y'all and it was like for one it was like y'all and then like for two people it was like hey y'all and then for like three people it was like all y'all and i was like it actually kind of it was it was probably a dumb tour shirt but it made me laugh and y'all, kind of which funny. is a, pos- a possessive, yeah, form, yeah, y'all's, yep, it was good, yeah, pretty funny, made me laugh. Well, was underrated. We should have some great discussion since you were flying during the U- UCLA game. I didn't see that, and then I did see were... the last three minutes of overtime, oh, which uh, we're the not the best three minutes. Part. <laughs> we're not the best three minutes of the game for sure. And then you. Uh, <laughs> We're too busy to watch USC, which of course uh, I was as yes. well. So, yes. and uh, when I got home, I I got home from uh, uh, something at a friend's house, and the game had gotten over about a half an hour prior, and I I just had a bad feeling about it, and I didn't know if I wanted to waste the next you know hour or whatever fast forwarding through the game, um, so I could write a recap. Um, I just texted one of my friends and was like, D- "Should I bother watching the game um, to write a recap?" And they. Uh, um, they said, uh, no, n- n- no, you can, you can like whatever the box score says is fine. And so, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, sweet. And by that time, the Ken Palm box score was up. So I even had a, that makes life you know, easier. Yeah, exactly. That makes actually, life I, actually, I don't know if it was, uh, maybe it was by the time I was done doing it and I had already written. Um, I, I will say, uh, that I was a bit scared during the UCLA game. Um, the official box score was uh, not working for um, uh, about the first, I'd say, 20-plus minutes of the game. Oh. And, and so, I like, 20-plus game minutes. And so I was uh, I was kind of sweating. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be – at least I was watching that one. I was like, this would be a fun recap to write. Like, I don't know, the score was something at some point. Um, I know I, I was sending you uh, text messages on the plane – and so I, that was just going to be my like. I was just going. I'm just going to pull from this to write the recap. It's probably a good idea. It was kind of, it was pretty good blow by blow. I was I was very thankful for that. Yeah, I'll, and so, also thankful for Alaska Airlines text messaging service. Yeah, that, while that in flight, which is and very it useful. worked really well too. That was, sometimes it doesn't work that well. No, um, it, it worked great. So yeah. I was uh, getting your text messages while watching uh, Ken Ken Burns Vietnam, which was. Uh, you know, an interesting combination, but sorry. Right. Yeah, it's not ty- not my type of uh, airplane movie. <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, if I'm stuck on an airplane for four hours, might as well learn something. 
I've watched all the this C- stuff I don't do at home. You know, all this stuff I won't make time to watch at home. But I've I've got a you know I'm a captive audience on an airplane. Yeah, I always do that, and then I'm just too I'm generally too tired when I'm on an airplane to pay attention to anything. I have watched uh, the Secret Life of Walter Mitty, uh, the movie with Ben Stiller, probably twenty times on a plane, <laughs> just because I'm like, well, whatever. <laughs> Like I'll, I'll just turn this on. Um, I know exactly what happens. Yeah. Um, it's like a, it's a fairly, it's a pretty fun movie. It's nothing like groundbreaking, but um, there's some good parts. And yeah, it's uh, th- I've watched that movie a lot. Um, it's a staple. Because uh, nice. you know, some, I don't really want to get into like a two and a half hour uh, Marvel movie very sure. often. I, I know people sure. do that. I know, especially if you fly up and down the West Coast, you don't really even have time to watch a Marvel movie. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, something that uh, would have been too long for a flight to L.A. would be the game against UCLA. Yeah. Because um, it went into overtime. Uh, that was a bit uh, a bummer of a game. Started out really well. Um Cougs built a double-digit lead with about 14 minutes left, and it really looked like they finally had kind of maybe had figured out some of their road woes. Um, obviously, playing a, a lesser opponent was helped a little bit. They've played some tough teams on the road. Uh, but then, uh, like something that's happened over and over again, we've seen the defense just fall apart in the second half on the road, and that happened again. Um, that U- UCLA had... 38 points with 14 minutes left of course finished with 30 with uh, uh 69 um and really it was just how they were getting the points um a lot a lot easier uh inside uh, particularly in overtime that was that was demoralizing um when you had a guy that hadn't done a whole lot the whole game and riley just completely abused pollard in the post um for seven points in a row um and you just it basically, he did what Bonton did to UCLA in the previous uh, matchup in overtime, just but it seemed with even more ease. Um, but yeah, you know, you, it was a it was a tough one. You know, obviously CJ was struggling again against you at UCLA for the second time in a row. Um, but you, Pollard went nuts. Like I I could not believe it. Um, four or five from three. Uh, it's like it's, he's been building to this moment all season. Um, he just kept shooting them and kept making them. It was it was nuts. Um, and then you have Bonton had a pretty good game. Um, can't not not a lot of fault with what he did uh, against UCLA. Obviously, uh, well, uh, up until the last uh, two possessions of the game. <laughs> I was gonna say um, right up until the end of uh, regulation. But. Yeah, then then he uh, just decided to go hero ball uh, when. Uh, the Cougs really just needed one more one more bucket to win the game, and uh, he took two very difficult shots when there was time to not do that. Uh, you could also uh, question Kyle Smith for not calling time out. Um, they could have had about fourteen fifteen seconds to to draw something up, which Smith uh, has been quite adept at this season. Um, out of timeouts, the Cougs seem to score pretty regularly, um, but. Uh, he just obviously decided not to call the timeout, and Bonton just kind of held the ball and shot a 28-footer, um, a contested 28-footer off the dribble, which uh, and almost almost made it, actually, but <laughs> the, but he didn't. And uh, they go into overtime just get absolutely whooped. Um, real bummer that uh, LAB was off his game offensively because if they got anything from him, uh, this thing would have been a walk away. Um Nice little stretch for Noah Williams. Those just a bunch of free throws. Um, the Cougs aren't a team that usually get to the line, but no one was drawn. He had a nice stretch where he drew three fouls and hit all the free throws uh, yeah. towards the end. So it's pretty good when you score nine points and only take one shot. Yeah, yeah, you took one field goal, one two point, one, one field goal attempt, one two pointer, but nine points. Yeah, still, still thanks to some turnovers, uh, sub one hundred offensive rating, but yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, all around offensively. I mean, when when Ellaby's that bad to get those contributions from, you know, Tony Miller. I mean, you're really happy to have him back in that game. He just he, he's 
he at six six he's WC's best finisher around the basket. It's crazy just to watch the night and day from the way he can finish compared to like Pollard or or Markovetsky, um, yeah. when getting getting a catch off a dish from um, from a guard and he 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 made some tough lands. Um, he had a nice post up move where he came around under the basket, um, and and so it's just. Uh, He's just a good finisher, and Smith noted that after the game. Just says he just makes all you know he makes all his shots, and yeah, he's five of six, and um, yeah, it's it, it was nice to have him back offensively because you know uh, especially with Ellaby down, um, that was some offense they definitely needed. Obviously, the Pollard hitting those threes was great. Twenty points from him, um, you never expect twenty from Jeff, so that's a great. Um, Bonton playing a little better than usual, like playing more to his uh, capabilities. Um, yeah, uh, so it's nice that they they really didn't go with a deep rotation at all, um, and we saw the uh, what we saw the result of that in overtime. <laughs> yeah, that it didn't help in overtime, and then it it didn't help uh, it didn't help on Saturday against USC. Either. Yeah, I I can't I can't imagine Jeff Pollard has ever played forty minutes before, no. uh, even close. No, um, and you had him and Ellaby played forty two. Bontown played forty. Would have played forty two if not getting hurt, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, yeah, you had uh, just two guys. So you got 28 minutes from Miller off the bench as a six man and 15 from Rodman, and then just some, you know, kind of um, minimal stuff from Markovetsky and Rapp and Cannon. And, uh, like, Cannon didn't even officially log a minute, but got a personal foul. So mm. <laughs> I don't know how that works. It's very um, productive. Uh, Ayaz Kuntz hurt, obviously. He's not playing. Um, I don't think he played himself out of, of the rotation unless he's just been that bad no. in practice. Um, no, I don't think so. But yeah, um, Chris Smith uh, gave him trouble again, uh, especially early. Um, and then obviously he hit the two-pointer um, to tie the game late. Uh, but he early, it, he, it looked like they had no answer for him. Um, but they kind of forced him into some outside shots, and, and he didn't do so well with that down the stretch. Uh, they weren't letting him get to the rim quite as much. He was a terror on the offensive glass. Um, yeah, I think, you know, when you're selling out to guard a guy, um, to, sometimes he can find his way um, to the rim a little easier, and he definitely did that. Seven offensive rebounds. That was just brutal. Um Especially the, again, early he got probably two or three of those in the first ten minutes, and uh, then got some crucial ones late as well. So yeah, the the defensive rebounding was definitely overall an issue that was primarily um, driven by Smith, uh, Chris Smith. Uh, but yeah, just only getting, only grabbing uh, sixty about sixty four percent of your uh, of your defensive rebounds is is not what this team needs. Yeah, and especially not against a team like UCLA that's not a particularly gifted offensive team, right? I mean, they've got really one major threat, um, and not that other guys can't do damage. Obviously, they can, but um, you don't want to make it easier on them by, you know, giving them a, giving them an easy putback, and you also don't want to make it easier by uh, giving them a chance to kick it out for a for a second shot three. Those, those are the ones that kind of that kind of kill you a lot, and so. Um, yeah, the offensive rebounding didn't help. Um, they did keep turnovers down, you know, which was good. Um, you know, other than you mentioned Noah Williams, uh, with the turnovers. And by the way, I want to point out Jeff Pollard has played 40 minutes before, and that was in the first UCLA game, which also, oh, that overtime. makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but he also played 38, uh, in the Oregon state game, the clay day game. So. He had that. I think uh, before this year, though, he had only played over 30 minutes in a game once. He played, I think, one game last year. He had 32 minutes. Those are 40 tough, it. tough minutes for Pollard. Yeah, and too. that's the that's that's the part that like is so hard. Um, is that you know it's it's not just that he's playing heavy minutes. It's that I mean he's he's an undersized center. Um, and so he is just constantly, constantly, constantly all night, you know, battling with guys who are, you know, bigger and or more athletic than him. Um, and he does fight super, super hard. But at, at some point, you know, y you know, you get pooped trying to do that. Uh, and I think that definitely showed in overtime um, when a dude who, you know, really hasn't done anything all year um, just ends up, you know, destroying everybody. 
And then, uh, you know, again, Saturday against USC, same deal. You know, just very, very tired, very, very ineffective. And, you know, God bless him for battling so hard. But, uh, you know, it's only, you know, play 40 minutes and be the center and only come up with six rebounds uh, is, you know, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah, um, I was pretty damn frustrated after this one uh, just because this seemed – you know, we knew this would be the easiest, easier one of of the weekend. Obviously, it's not only is it the Thursday game; it's a lesser team, and and they really had a chance. Like they was right there to take and, and to snag to steal a road game. You could tell you they know, all yeah. felt it too after yeah. the game. Like yeah. like when you listened uh, to Smith talk, like you could tell everyone felt that they were like, man, they really missed one on this. They like oh, and, and to sweep they UCLA, missed a big opportunity. Yeah, so. to sweep UCLA, which and. Uh, is rare and and to win in poly is rare. For the I'm not Cubes. sure we've ever like, swept UCLA, have we? Uh, I would guess said, we. WSU I would said, guess we haven't. W said, said WSU said not in the modern era, which I don't even know what that means. Um, yeah. But I I doubt in in, in any relevant um, yeah way we've I, ever I, swept. Given the overall we, we saw, we, WSU has swept UCLA recently in that they only played them one game and they won that game. So. Oh. <laughs> But well, never, that's, uh, that's I, not the same. But I, I don't think that uh, they've done a two-game sweep. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, and they had it. It was right there. Yeah. Um, you know, they had a four-point lead with uh, in the closing minutes. They had a two-point lead with and the ball with uh, about 30 seconds left. Um, those are situations that you uh, want to win. And, you know, they, they, didn't, they didn't pull it out. And it was a big fucking bummer. Um, it, UCLA had their own. Jeff Pollard esque offensive performance from Jaime Jaquez. <laughs> like he hasn't done much all year. He hit three threes in the second half. Like he, he that was nuts. Like I, I, and I was watching. I was like, I can't really complain because Pollard's hit all these threes too. Like it's like you can't be like, oh, woe is us. Um, the Cougs get did a little fortunate with uh, Tiger Campbell, like forgetting how to shoot free throws. Um, yeah, that was nice. Yeah, so. Yeah, he's typically he's not a great free throw shooter, but you know a sixty five percent guy to go three of ten is is beneficial, um, especially when you're saying he's lying ten times. But uh, yeah, that I don't know. Overall, the, the Cougs played well enough on offense to win. It's just that they they got tired and couldn't guard late, and and that that was all she wrote. And yeah. over time, they they really once they came out got that uh, three point play right right off the tip in overtime. You just you knew they were in trouble. Cougs missed a missed a couple lands. One may have been a goaltend. One probably was a goaltend actually, because um, they had called the same thing on CJ earlier. But but yeah, so obviously Thursday loss, um, and then uh, USC. I don't know what's uh, well. Obviously, leading into USC, uh, Bonton went down with an injury late in overtime. Um, you knew that wasn't going to be good. It looked bad. Yeah. Um I yeah. my initial hope was that he had taken a knee to the thigh and it was just a Charlie horse. Like it was kind of tough to see what happened. And I was like, please just be a bruise <laughs> or something. But uh yeah, wasn't a bruise. Yeah. Well we, yeah. So yeah, he's out for USC. Um and that's part of the reason I didn't, you know, come home and watch the the recap and text my friend cuz it's just like I uh, didn't feel like they would have had a great chance to win without Bonton. Um, I know people rag on him, but he's massively important to this team on both ends of the floor. Um, th- he's one of the few guys that can create shots and create shots for other people. Um, he's one of the few guys that, and then he also plays really good defense. Um, so not having him against USC, um, I think obviously where it really hurt was the offense. Um, USC is a great defensive team. And uh, they uh, shut the Cougs down even uh, more so than they did uh, the first time around. Um, so that was, a, that was a real bummer. Not like it. Really, no one played well on offense. Cannon played 23 minutes and had a had a couple buckets, um, but he's just he just doesn't use the ball that much when he's yeah. on offense. So it's I mean, not to really... play 23 minutes and use 9% of possessions is like, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's like, uh, I mean, Gervais Robinson doesn't even generally do that. 
that's I mean, it's just like like you got to really be passive uh, on offense in order to put up that kind of a number. And, uh, you know, and like I said, you know, we know I didn't watch the game, so I don't know exactly how it unfolded. But I do know that, you know, Cannon has really struggled at times to find a way to kind of fit in with the offense. Um, And and then when you take, you know, when you take your point guard off the floor and and really not just, you know, any point guard, but um, a guy who really dominates the ball. Right. Right. That's that's kind of the big difference is, you know, because you're taking you're, you're not just taking a guy off the off the court that uh you know is, is sort of fits in that spot plays those minutes whatever and, and that is true and that stuff you know uh does matter but when you take that guy off and that that guy is someone who who dominates the ball so hard and you know is is both creating for others and also you know when you know you get down into that shot clock winding down area um, you know, he's he's creating a shot for himself or, you know, or, or Ellaby's creating a shot for himself. So it's really one of those two guys. Well, now without, uh, you know, without Bonton, all, all of that falls to Ellaby. And, uh, you know, he did OK, I guess, 18 shots, 22 points. But, um, you know, certainly not really enough help from anybody else. Only Noah Williams and also in double figures and five turnovers, you know, too. Yeah. Which, yeah. Well, five turn. Yeah. Five turnovers for CJ, which didn't really help. Um, but Noah Williams, again, only other player in double figures with 10, he needed 13 shots to get there. He also had four more turnovers. Uh, so between LB and Williams, they had nine of the team's, uh, 11 turnovers and yeah, they, uh, they just, you know, when you go four of 28 from three, you're, you're not going to win very many games. And, uh, without Bonton on the floor, that that's really just one, uh, you know, one less credible threat that the team has. And, and that really, Makes them a lot easier to defend, which which is a bad idea against a team that's already very good defensively, like USC. Yeah, um, even you saw. Uh, it looks like uh, Henson came in garbage time, threw up four threes. It wasn't making them this time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just a bad day shooting all around. Yeah, point seven two points per possession, not great. Only six assists on those. Uh, I guess it was only 14 makes, so it's not totally bad. But <laughs> um, <laughs> when you put it that way, it's like yeah. six assists is so bad. Well, actually, that was almost half of their makes. So they they did have 18 makes. So I guess it was a third of their makes. Or 18 makes. So yeah, 18 yeah. makes. So you were yeah, looking at the yeah. two pointers, but yeah, I yeah. was looking at two pointers. Um, but, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a bummer because uh, you know USC had a you know a future NBA guy out. And yeah, in Onyeka Kongwu, um, and a guy who absolutely murdered them the first time. Yeah. And so you know, if WSU could have been at fuller strength, uh, you could have hoped they could have uh, um, gave them gave USC a, a, a bigger punch this time. But um, they still, uh, you know, I'm not not sure what to think about the defense against USC. I'd have to watch it, but. I mean, point nine nine looks good, but when you're talking about USC as far and away their best offensive players out of the game, like yeah. it's it, it that kind of temper. When you got a guy Daniel Utomi going off like he did, um, I mean, not much you can do when a guy hits five of ten threes. But uh, yeah, they seems like they you know they they the defense didn't let them down. It was the offense, but. Um, you, but you Bonton, know. you know, you made references. I mean, Bonton's really our best perimeter defender. Yep. Um, you know, I, people love Noah Williams, and I love Noah Williams, but he's he's not the perimeter defender yet that Bonton is. I mean, Bonton really gets after people, chases them off the three point line. Like he's he's so valuable defensively, and you know, so you have to wonder how much of that. I mean, it's not like USC shot a ton of threes. I mean, they only shot eighteen, <laughs> which was uh, and they shot forty four twos. So. Definitely Only forty three percent on twos too, which is pretty yeah, good which is it. which is quite low. So, yeah. um, particularly against against our pretty soft interior defense. So, uh, you know, so those things are good. I mean, that's good to hold them down a little bit there. But you know, they ended up shooting well enough from three, and and you got to figure that some of that had to be you know open looks without without Bonton. So it's a bummer. Coons, and going Coons forward, it's bad. Game. What's Coons that? Came back and Coons came back to play in this game. Yeah, so he he uh, played eleven minutes. Uh, but uh, one thing that I had did notice, like DJ Rodman didn't play a whole heck of a lot this weekend. Um, I think eight minutes and four minutes. 
Yeah. Um, or oh, sorry, he had 15 against uh, UCLA. Um, when he's not knocking down threes, his offensive uh, he's not much of an offensive threat. Um, and he didn't do that against uh, US, UCLA, and he didn't even take one against US, USC. So uh, maybe that's part of the issue. Um, yeah, so I don't know, all around, shitty weekend. You, you had that heartbreaking loss and then lose, lose one of your, you know, your second best player in, a, in a, an injury late in the game when the game was essentially out of hand. Um, and, uh, and then you're, you're without him for uh, probably your most uh, – this game, which, the, to be honest, the Cougs probably were going to lose to USC anyway. Um, but now you're pretty much your most winnable game left on the schedule is Cal, uh, which would be today if you're reading this when it was – or you're listening to this when it was released. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully you listen to it before, uh, before the game on Wednesday night. Yeah. But so you have, you know, your second best player who at times is your best player. Um, when CJ's off, um, uh, he's going to be out against Cal, which is a bummer. Um, it, do you think that, um, I guess we can, well, how much, how, how far are we into this? Do we need to take a break? Yeah. Maybe we'll take a break and then we'll talk about it the next weekend. That sounds like a good idea. We're back. All right. What are you What are you drinking to drown your cougar basketball sorrows? Yeah, I brought back, uh, as you know, uh, I visited Pint House Pizza in Austin, Texas, while I was there, and uh, brought back some some pints from Pint House Pizza. And this is the Electric Jellyfish Hazy IPA. So, so I'm having one of those. Basically, to, their flagship uh, IPA. Yeah, so to drown my sorrows, I also got their uh, their limited release. Well, what was it? Southern Tropic? Southern Tropic, that's what it was called. So they actually had released that over the weekend. So I was feeling very good to get to bring some of those home and load up my suitcase with, with beer from there and bottle of beer from Jester King, thanks to, thanks to your recommendation. So came back with some beer. That was good. What did you think of that Jester King... Uh brewery and and, and visiting it yeah such a cool place it was funny i was like driving out there and um i was just kind of like where where is that you know where am i going it's it's crazy it's still an austin address yeah nowhere near austin yeah i mean the thing i kind of figured out about texas though is that like like because the city there's so much like space between the cities like the city is like the city right yeah so like with with uh san antonio i was like how big is san antonio like it can't be that much bigger than like i'm thinking like tacoma you know and uh because i'm just kind of thinking like the downtown area right and then and then i look it up and i go oh it's like a million and a half what the hell and it's just because like everything is part of san antonio proper whereas you know for us it's like uh, you know, it's like the greater Puget Sound area and, you know, yeah. like not a lot inside the city limits, right. On, on most of these cities. So anyway, um, yeah, it was, it was really cool to go out there. Um, you know, just a really fun place to hang out and have a beer. Um, so for, you know, obviously I, I, I don't know how many of our listeners have been there, but probably not many. Um, so it's on a farm kind of out in the middle of nowhere, um, and it's next to, um, you know, other like it's next to like vineyards and, and all kinds of stuff kind of out in the hills. And so, um, you get out there and it's they're, they're, they're again, they're, they're not a lot out there in that area. And, and they've got, um, like a cool little, like uh, eating hall where they've got some food, uh, wood fired pizzas and such. And they've got, um, you know, they've got their, their bar set up above and there's picnic tables and stuff just kind of outside with like this Oak tree cover, um, and then they've got just like this massive grass field where like people can do whatever. There's a bunch of kids out there playing football <laughs> when I was there. Uh, and then they have goats. They have goats. Um, and, and apparently there were some baby goats born like earlier that day or the day before or something. So I got to see got to see the baby goats and got to try some some crazy ass beers, which was super fun. And really, the beers reminded me a lot of like going to Holy Mountain, mm-hmm. kind of similar kind of experimental yeah. styles. Um, so really fun to try, try some different stuff that, um, you know, you're not really going to find anywhere else. So yeah, very, very cool. Anybody who goes to Austin, uh, highly recommend making the trek out. It's about a 30 minute, 25, 30 minute drive outside of town, um, to get there, but, um, definitely recommend driving out to Jester King and, 
and checking it out. There's there's a lot of cool stuff in Austin, man. That's definitely yeah, wonderful. yeah. I love that place. I every trip to Austin and that part of Texas, I, I make my uh, I try to get out there. I think I've been there four or five times at this point. Um, just uh, like I I rent rent a car specifically so I can drive out there. Either. Yeah. Uh, cause it's too far to, yeah. cab. my initial <laughs> was, my initial thought was, Oh, I'm going to get a, you know, get an Uber or Lyft out there so that I can just, you know, drink to my heart's content and, and then ride back. And then I like looked and went, Oh, Oh no, never mind. Oh yeah. It's always, <laughs> it's always, uh, alcohol. never mind. It's a drink, drinking management out there. Cause you're, you're out. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, it was, uh, it was cool. You know, we got to do like, uh, on your recommendation, got to do a whole bunch of things. So the pint house pizza, that was, that was your recommendation. The place is very cool. The pizza was excellent. Um, you know, went, uh, got some good barbecue, although, uh, uh, somebody on Twitter did not approve of my barbecue choice cause I didn't eat it fr- as he put it, Franklin's, which it's not Franklin's. I know this it's Franklin. And I got scolded by somebody because I almost said Franklin's and then they let me know. It's not Franklin's. Frank Kroger's. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, fine. But I, you know, we did try to go to Franklin. Pike's uh, my, place. Yeah, I know. My dad and his wife went to Franklin uh, and they said, so they waited in the line and then got in and got, got the food and said it was amazing. And then they said there were people who actually walked in at like, like 1230 or one um, because they just, you know, they hadn't sold out of the meat yet. So it was still open and, you know, they were, you could, they walked in and got food. So I'm thinking, okay, I, I don't want to spend, you know, five hours of my weekend with my wife, uh, you know, sitting in a line <laughs> trying to get barbecue. Uh, so I tried the, uh, I tried my dad's advice, which was, Hey, well then try to try to do it this way. And I get, no, no, not on. I imagine some of it had to do with, it was, you know, Sunday on a three day weekend and also the, uh, Austin marathon was going on. And so, um, when they, when they were like, we're done promising meat y'all, sorry, but you know, you can stay and there might be some, and I'm like, okay. And so kind of out for a little while left, came back and, and then it was like, nope, like by, by 1230, they were like, nope, nope, we're done. We're done. It's all gone. They ate all the meat. So went to uh style switch instead, which is recommended by a bunch of locals. And, uh, uh, as I was talking about with PJ on, on Slack, it was sort of like, uh, I, you know, I don't know if, if Franklin was better. Um, I don't know if any of the other places, you know, you recommended uh, Le Barbecue. Uh, you know, some other people recommend a couple other places. Like I, like, I don't know if any of those are actually better or anything. All I know is uh, this was amazing because I don't have maybe the most discriminating palate. And, uh, and I, felt, I felt great <laughs> about eating it because I was like, I, yeah. We don't we don't get like you know twelve inch beef ribs uh, back here in Washington. So I know a place. Do you? Where at? In, in Gig Harbor Barbecue oh. to you. Yeah, Ooh. they're from the guys are from Texas. Oh, they got them. They got them big old dinosaur bone ribs Ooh, there. I'm up they're to pretty do that. pretty good. I can't, like I would love to like smoke some of my own of those, but I can't even find a butcher that has them. That has like has the ribs like that. So yeah, I don't. know. They probably sh- have them shipped. They, yeah, they definitely do. Like they, uh, they have uh, like these like uh, s- uh, single serving size bluebell ice cream shipped up there too. Like they're okay. just Texas people trying to. Okay. I think they have Shiner as well. So, well, yeah, I yeah, am definitely gonna have to check that out because that. I would say that I, that is definitely my bag. So the, the uh, yeah the the beef rib is my favorite. I I love the beef rib from La Barbecue. Um, I I would say it's not as good at barbecue to you but it's very very good and so uh it's definitely worth like what um i i think it's like pj or someone said like if something's like it's it's we have this culture of like oh you got to do the best you got to do the best like even if something's 95 percent as right. good right like we're it's like somehow not good now right like, like am okay. i going to be able to tell the difference between a plus plus barbecue and a plus barbecue i, I will say from right. living in the south and my trips to texas and stuff um i came back to the northwest and there are a lot of terrible barbecue joints. yes there like, no there's no doubt about that but yeah. but th- you can also tell like there's some decent ones like um i've had some good stuff from jack's in seattle and, and the barbecue to you from gig harbor and yeah. they're, like there's some places that are good I've had some places I won't name that are just terrible. <laughs> um, but I, but it, cause you can definitely suck at barbecue. Oh uh, yeah. But, I mean, but, I'll say this, like, like what I had at styles was miles better than anything I've ever had in Washington that, you know, that I haven't, that yeah. I haven't smoked myself, yeah. you know, that I've gotten at a restaurant. So 
Yeah, it was really, really good. I didn't much care for the pork rib, uh, mostly just because like it was done well. It just they they put they put a lot of cayenne in their rub. That was yeah. it was a little too much for me. I know sometimes people do that with pork, but I don't I don't I don't do pork in Texas. I never get. Yeah, I only did it just because, you know, I was was just there and I was like, yeah, I want you to throw on. I only I had I literally had them throw on one rib. Oh, yeah. I was like, here, just give me one. I'll I'll taste the rib. But uh, the brisket was was incredible. Um, And and like I said, the beef, the beef rib was was unreal. So, yeah, Yeah. I, I have a good friend that lived it. He just he's British and what he likes most about the u.s is like the pulled pork and stuff um and he lived in dc for a while where like that region uh pulled pork is a lot is like the dominant right. um the dominant uh barbecue dish but in yep. texas it's beef like it's right. brisket it's beef yep. rib yep. um and but i could i could never get like we'd go to la barbecue or, or whatever and he would order like a pulled pork sandwich and i'd be like dude yeah, don't like, do that. <laughs> and, but but he lived he so he lived in San Antonio for a while and still like it was pulled pork. I'm like, dude. Um, but yeah, the get some it, chopped brisket or something if you if I that's know, what you right? want. You want a sandwich or something, you know? I know, I know. Yeah. Whatever, you know. Whatever. You, you, you like what you like. It's that's fine. true. That's true. That's yeah. true. I just want mine to be even more unhealthy. All right, <laughs> dude. I was. I kid you not. I was so like for about tw- my stomach was so full for like 24 hours. Like my body was having the most difficult time digesting all of that red meat. Oh yeah, <laughs> Amanda and I like one, so bad. One of my trips to uh, Austin, like Amanda was with me, and we went out to Jester King and we loaded up on the barbecue, um, like beef rib and brisket yeah, yeah. and stuff before we went out. And so yeah. we were just like, you know, you you unwrap it in that paper if you get it to go. It's oh, just yeah. like grease stained, just soaked. And because like a beef rib is literally like beefy butter, like it's yeah. just that's and 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 then the brisket, but like um, the brisket's supposed to be the best. At they say like the brisket's really good at a barbecue, but the the beef rib is so much better. Like Amanda and I were both like, if we cut when we come back here, we're only getting the beef rib. Like it's so fucking good. Like yeah. I don't want to waste my calories. Like because you just <laughs> we just I felt like I felt like required to eat this brisket. Yeah, and stuff. So we just feel like shit after we're like fighting over the beef rib. Like yeah, it's mine, it's mine. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. yeah, and they're like twenty five bucks for like a rib and one hundred percent worth it. Like at, at, so at the barbecue, at the barbecue, they're like they're 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 20 uh i think they're 22 bucks a pound and the ribs are a pound and a half so they're like yeah i 30, think it was something like that at the place we something. went to yeah you just wait you just order it and you're like oh shit this is a lot more money than i thought it would be yeah yeah but, like, this, i know this, sarah this, like, was fun. like sarah got some sticker shock man she was like how much was all of this and i'm like do you want to know for real <laughs> the beef rib is the really like the ribs are always the hardest one because it's like it, it's by the like because you you're like you can ask for a pound of brisket but you you have to ask for a full rib right and the ribs are so big like yep. and you yours could just be a big meaty boy and yep. it might be 40 bucks or whatever, yep. you know? <laughs> and you know it's it's you know for to eat it all the time you know it would would probably be prohibitive but uh you know considering good, uh, good thing i don't live in texas i, I know would, if i, I don't but considering I, I don't know when i'm going to be in texas next although i did i did beg uh i did beg pat chun to please schedule a please schedule a road game against the university of texas like i don't even care somebody tweeted me back and was like only if we get a return game and i'm like eh, Fuck eh, it, dude. Schedule, you know, I, schedule. at this point i don't you know i'll be honest like if we don't get a return game like that's not a deal breaker for me Ske- schedule schedule <laughs> re- schedule re- a home and home against utsa there we go uh, san antonio is not far from austin no, also, no, there it's is, like an hour hour and 15 like 2m smokehouse in san antonio's yeah like, because we did both we so we flew into san antonio and out of san antonio so we were in san antonio for a couple of days and a couple of days in austin too so yeah san antonio was great too yeah yeah let's let's make that happen let's uh come on pat chun make it happen i'm actually going to san antonio next month for work but Ooh. like uh i know i told you about uh, one of my favorite breweries there uh, it's so like you like you said so spread out like i'm at, yeah. I'm at a hotel in hill country and it's so far away but I'm, I'm i'm gonna try to i'm trying to figure out how i can go visit that brewery but uh, weathered souls yeah, um, I was but, gonna um, try to do that, and I didn't. I didn't get there. We didn't actually spend that much time in San Antonio. It was kind of weird, uh, mostly because Sarah wanted to go to Waco and visit Magnolia. So, so we did that for a day. 
I don't even that was know a lot of time is. in the car. You were sending me pictures. I, I had no <laughs> idea what it was. I was you like, don't know what, what is... the Magnolia silos are? No. Oh, Craig. Goodness. You know, Chip and Joanna Gaines? You know, Fixer Upper? Come on. No. You really don't know any of that? No. Oh, I feel like I, feel like I got, for once, I got something on you on pop culture. I feel good about this. Yes, uh, I assume that's like a TLC show. Yeah, it's, that's pretty much it. So they they uh, they're from Waco, and they uh, you know they help people fix up their houses. And he's like a construction. Is that dude. the guy that got diagnosed with uh, like uh, cancer based on someone watching him on TV? I don't. Is think that so? was it? That guy? Oh, I don't man, think so. As as someone else then. Yeah, I don't think so. Anyway. So, uh, so he's, he's like the construction dude. And then, uh, his wife is, is this really, uh, really talented interior designer. And so they work together to fix up houses and it's kind of a sappy show. Like they help people, um, they like pick a couple and then they go look at a bunch of houses and the couple picks the house and then they basically fix it up for them. And it's, it's really, it's really cool and really neat. And so, you know, people love, uh, people love Magnolia and it's, uh, I was joking. I think I, I sent you, I think I sent you a message or sent somebody a message and I was like, this is definitely like a things white people like kind of place. You know, it's just like all these like middle-aged white people making their, you know, uh, their pilgrimage out to Magnolia and, you know, worshiping at the altar of Chip and Joanna Gaines and so it was interesting. Yeah, and I also, was wondering how you ended up in Waco. I'm like, so that's how. Yes. Yeah, so that's how. Yeah. So it's Waco is like they're like they're, they, they've got like almost a little like compound kind of thing there. It's like a bakery and a, a restaurant and like yeah. a store and two like two different stores and whatever. So anyway, it's yeah, there were lot, lots of people out there. And basically, that's all there is out there. Like it's kind of in a rundown part of the city. Not that. Uh, it's that great of a city to begin with. So uh, it's yeah, they're they're really I learned there's like nothing else in Waco, man. And I was looking, I was thinking ah, maybe there's breweries and then I discovered there wasn't. And then I remembered that Waco is like a like a pretty uh, it, it's like it's like the Southern Baptist town of Southern Baptist towns. Not really right. towns, a city, but, um, you know, Baylor's a, ostensibly a Baptist university and like all that stuff. And so, yeah, yeah, not breweries, not really breweries there. And uh, there were three, but they were not very well regarded. So I didn't. I didn't bother I went the Jester King instead at the end of the night. Uh, I should have. I realized I had a friend that went to grad school for uh, social work at Baylor. I, I, she might have had some. But, uh, That's I all right. Steve, sounds like you guys. I was ready to get way. the hell out of there, man. I was like, I, I had had enough of Chip and Joanna and God bless him. But that not, Baylor stink on you. Uh, yeah, I, I was, you know, I, was, I, I just sort of explained to Sarah why, uh, why I have no love for Baylor University. And she was like, oh, okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> I was like, oh, so there was the, the whole reason that <laughs> the, the only reason I knew Waco existed when I when I was a kid. <laughs> was the cult? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Branch Davidians? <laughs> yeah. I was like, that that that's what I knew of Waco before. The, the next time I heard of Waco was when we played Baylor in football like 15 years ago. Yep. And I was like. I was like, oh, that's in Waco. Oh, that's where the, the freaking cult compound was. You know, like, yeah. It's good to be known for for two things, right? Your uh, your cults and your sexual assaults. So yeah, I guess go Baylor, go Baylor, go Waco, <laughs> go Baylor into a fire. Yeah, pretty much. The town was uh, not impressive. We'll just say that. I was I was much ready like, to get back. I was ready to get like back to, to Austin. That was much more my vibe. Yeah, Austin's great. Yeah, um, I would love to go back. Well, that segment was a lot longer. Okay, so I'm I'm drinking. Uh, what are you drinking? Uh, I I I was at Peaks and Pints, a, a bar mm. in um, Tacoma mm-hmm. uh, a few days ago. Um, I was just peeking their cooler, and they had a beer from Berlick Brewing, which is a brewery in Portland Ooh. called Dad Beer. Mm. It's got a great can. It's ah, just white. It's perfect. And just says dad beer underneath it says easy drinking beer. Yeah. And I always like I always like using um drinking. I do it in my text message all the time, like taking off the G um with uh words at an I N G. Right. Like, I'm drinking. Right. Um I do I have one uh edit for them though, is that they don't have the uh, apostrophe after the N. Oh um so, Any dad knows you have to do that. Yeah. Ugh. And it's multiple times on the can. Oh, Come, on. Come on, Bear Lick. Come on. 
I'm did probably they, pronouncing now, that wrong. Now, I got to know this also. Did they also include a dad joke on the can? Uh... No, it just says oh. the kind of the kind of easy drinking beer your great grandpappy used to drink in the 1880s. It's because it's a pre-prohibition oh, okay. lager, right. so it, it's okay. made to emulate recipes, but that breweries made um, before uh, before they were not allowed to make beer anymore. I'm just thinking um, if you know if you're going all in on the dad thing, you might as well have some dad jokes to go with it. But that's all right. Berlick's pretty solid brewery. I've, I've I visited it before. Um, it's a cool tap room. Uh, they've apparently now are distributing cans of beer to Washington. I didn't realize that. Must be a pretty new thing. Um, yeah, so uh, dad beer. Um, hopefully this is a regular thing that they make because uh, I, I uh, Father's Day, I think I want to have a dad beer. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, get, they got me with the branding. They did it. It's a pretty solid little drinkable lager, too, and it, it's not offensive in any way. Yeah, I mean, um, listen, we are none of us are immune to uh, to to a well designed can or well uh, a well thought out branding of the can. So, oh yeah, I mean, I bought I don't know what I bought. Like I bought like I think the the my most impulse buy uh, on that front was uh, the Pu- when Puyallup River Brewing right before they went uh, right before they went out of business. Um, did a big smooth double IPA or something like that. Didn't and was, you drink that on the I podcast? might have. I might have. So yeah. So the big smooth, I was like, Psh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? This beer might taste like shit and I'll drink it anyway. Go Sonics. So that's kind of how I roll. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh now that we spent uh twenty minutes talking about whatever. Texas. Uh, we can go back to yeah, Texas. We didn't <laughs> even talk to- about Texas drivers. <laughs> Welcome to Texas. Oh, that's horrifying. Here's how, you know what though? Like when you're, okay, before we move on, when you visit some place for like, and, and you've had this experience, so I'm sure it's kind of the same deal, right? Like when you visit a place for like three or four days, it takes like maybe a day and then you start like adapting, you know, to the local stuff. Right. And so like I started driving like a Texan, you know, as you put it, like you, how how did you put it? Like it, Texas, there's no... There's no defensive there's, driving. There, there's no defensive driving. Everyone is driving offensively yeah. or offensively. Everyone's on offense. Yeah, all everyone's time. on offense. <laughs> and so it's like, so I kind of figured that out. And then, uh, and then once you like, kind of once you get used to it, there's actually, there's actually a little bit of comfort in that. Cause you just feel like, okay, well at some point somebody's going to cut me off and they're not going to hit me. It's going to be fine. Like they know what they're doing and here we go. And so, so I come back to Washington last night and I'm driving home from the airport and sure enough, I'm like on the left side of a, of a semi and my exit's coming up and I'm like, well, I can slow down and slide in behind him or I can hit the gas, fly in front of him, fly across two lanes and hit my exit. So I did the, I I did it the way I'd been doing it for three days, which is, you know, hit the gas, cut off the semi and (laughs) cruise across two lanes and get to my exit. So anyway. Enough Texas talk. <laughs> Texas cast. Texas cast. Uh, how about California cast? Let's yeah, play some let's... more California schools in basketball. Yeah, let's play the other two. The senior um, California school. University yeah. of Ca- the original University of California. The original. It is the I'm original, sure right? The- it is the original. That's what I thought. And they lowered that over UCLA. That's right. I know they do because, you know, the, the baby Bruins and all that stuff. So Cal, Cal, who has beaten the Cougs this year on yeah. the road, as everyone has. Yeah. Um, pretty disappointing loss, that one, because Cal is rated number 180 in the Ken Palm rankings. Um, WSU sitting at 126 at the moment. Um, they tasted that sweet top 120 mm, briefly for right a before, moment. Like, like it was like right before the they, they have it listed as 123 on Kemp or 123 I think on Kemp Palm, but like uh or or, or for you against USC because actually they went up because they barely lost to you at UCLA. Um, they were like 119, but I think it, it settled there on 120 before the game started. But yeah, they were 119 briefly, heading into Colorado as well. That's so. right. Yeah. yeah so, so they they've, they've hit they've that had, high water mark a couple times. Oh, it's weird. It's like when they play at home, they go up, and when they're yeah, on the weird. road, they go down. Weird. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Yeah. 
Except for when uh, they played UCLA. Like, they did go up three spots after uh, after losing to UCLA because it was such a yeah. close loss. But Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, the, the uh, so Cal is – Cal's um, bad. They're bad. Um, Bonton being out. Does not um, help. Does not help. That makes me worried. Um, Cal has a very good player, Matt Bradley, who – was very good against us last time. Um, he's definitely their primary guy. Also, they got a ton from Paris Austin, who is generally shitty, but hit all of his shots against WSU. Um, that makes he was actually most of them two pointers too on a for a guy who's only made forty percent of his twos all yeah, year long. And he hit a lot of jumpers. He also got to the rim. Uh, which was uh, – that's where you're kind of worried about yeah. Bonton being out. Obviously, he played in that game, but at home, they just seem to play better defense. Who who knows why? Um, but uh, Bonton being out, not being able to check Austin um, is a – Austin, hey. Um, uh, we haven't said that enough today. Um, but not being able to check him um, is, is a little concerning. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I, I still think they can probably get it together um, – a little bit on offense against this team. They're not too overwhelming size wise and stuff. I, but, and they they were like, this is a team that CJ can go off against. Um, but, uh, defensively, you know, missing Bonton, obviously, obviously offensively, I expect them to take a step back, but, um, I, I, I'm just, I still think that WSU is better without Bonton um because cal is just that bad especially at home yeah um but i still think this is going to be this has me a lot more worried because bonton is out yeah for sure i mean for all the reasons we talked about earlier in the podcast i mean he's you know he's the trigger man on the offense and again he does get out of control sometimes and fans really like to um you know really like to point that out and harp on that and which, which i think is sort of is a little weird um, just because it's like, but it, it's not, it, it fits in really with what fans do, right? Which is they, they sort of expect that players will always make good decisions and always, you know, have good process and, um, you know, whatever. And, you know, it's, it's the same reason why they get mad about, you know, quarterback throws a few interceptions and, oh my God, how can you do that? You just can't do that. You know? And it's like, if I was on that field, you know, I would never have thrown that pass. Or if I was, if I was on that basketball court, I'd know that, you know, I would know that that's a bad shot and I wouldn't take that shot, you know? And so, uh, you know, obviously now my throat hurts, but <laughs> it's just like, you know, there's a reason why, you know, Smith gives him a lot of latitude. I mean, are those all the greatest shots? Of course not. But, um, you know, you, you do get uh, enough moments of, of, you know, maybe brilliance is overstating it a little bit, but you get, a, a, you know, you get those moments of really excellent play. Um, and a lot of times they're pretty decent stretches and, um, you know, and, and, and to be honest, you know, in, in conference play, he's been a pretty efficient player when he's not turning the ball over like that. That's really been the key. Um, you know, his, his shot selection has generally been better. And, um, you know, he has had those moments where he's just gone, you know, gone bonkers and, um, without him on the floor, um, it's, it's just quite an adjustment. So I hope that, uh, you know, a couple things I, I think are working in our favor. One's being at home. Um, the other one is, you know, they will have had a few days of practice to kind of figure out, you know, how they want to handle that. Um, you know, they, certainly more than the, the, you know, less than 48 hours they had to figure it out between the UCLA game and the USC game. So uh, coaching staff should have a better plan. If there's anything we know at this point is that, um, you know, the coaching staff is pretty good and, and they'll figure something out. And, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm interested to see what they come up with. I know that, uh, you know, last game what they did was they – you know, they, they put Miller in the starting lineup. So they went, they went bigger. Now, I don't know if that was a, um, a USC specific thing, or if that was a, you know, if that's kind of the plan they want to go with, you know, maybe get your, you know, your most talented five on the floor, you know, maybe that's the idea. So I don't know. It's going to be going to be interesting to see what he does. Um, personally, I'd like to see him go with Ryan Rapp, um, either Ryan Rapp or DJ Rodman, um, just because I think, I think they're really at their best when, uh, you know, when they're, when they're a little, um, you know, they're still, still fairly long on the perimeter. Um, you know, when they're not, you know, basically putting three smallish guys across the front line, right. Where you've right. got, uh, you know, Miller and Pollard and then, you know, CJ Ellaby. Um, you know, I think, I think I'd rather see him go with it, uh, you know, really stick with the three guard set 
Um, mm-hmm. And and I would you know I wouldn't be surprised either if the plan against USC was was sort of USC specific. You know, because you're dealing with a lot of size there. Um, probably worried a bit about Rakosovic, things like that. So anyway, yeah, I'm I'm curious. Um, I'd I'd be I'd be fairly excited to see either uh, either Rap or Rodman uh, start that game. Kind of see what those guys can do. I think that'd be I think that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. And maybe maybe you I, come out with the you know maybe you put Rap in there and come out in the zone, just kind of throw Cal off and <laughs> you know maybe just be a little weird right out of the right out of the gate. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I, w- I don't think I'd want to. They, they got a couple guys that can launch from deep. I, <laughs> I don't know, um, but uh, I, but if I think you're concerned that, about penetration, which was something yeah, you know you talked about, that, and and yeah. you know again maybe there's something to be said for throwing my curveball right out of the gate. So yeah, anyway, yeah, I expect you know they'll they'll have the advantage in turnovers. They should um, should things play out the way they typically do in WSU's at home and Cal turns the ball over. Uh, quite a bit more than WSU does, um, and WSU forces uh, quite a bit more turnovers than Cal does. Um, so I, I would expect WSU to be able to create some advantage that way. Um, Cal is a very good defense. It's I wouldn't, you know, Cal's a very good defensive rebounding team. Given the way WSU's kind of just not even tried in that, I wouldn't expect WSU to get many second chances. Um, yeah, so I. These are both uh, not good offenses. Uh, Cal's even worse despite having Bradley, but maybe the subtracting Bonton, suddenly they're both very bad. Um, defensively, they've been uh, the eighth and ninth defense um, per possession in conference play. Um, so uh, we'll see. That I, This is probably going to be an ugly game. Um, but yeah, I... I uh, if the Cougs, I think, can uh, turn those turnovers in the buckets, um, get get some advantage there, um, and knock down threes, they're going to probably take a lot more threes, um, and they're a better three point shooting team. Um, so I I hope they can get an advantage there. Maybe CJ can shoot a little better at home than he did on the road. Um, you know, if Rap does play, um, I think that kid can stroke it. He just doesn't take very many shots. Yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, D- DJ Rodman, another guy, um, I think they can create some advantages in, in those departments and, and hopefully just get, you know, get back, get, get back to winning. Um, and then hopefully you get Bonton back um, come Sunday. Yep. And there's a chance, apparently, because it looked it looked bad and it sounded like there were, I don't know, somewhere uh, it was being floated. Hey, he may be done for the year. So pretty exciting to hear that. uh you know, there's a at least some chance of him uh, coming back this weekend in the second game. So, and that second game is Stanford, who is also dealing with injuries. Um, they, uh, it's, uh, I guess, uh, De Silva's back now, though. Like he he looked like he was going to be out, but then he played against Arizona, so. He absolutely destroyed WC the first time, so I don't know. <laughs> like it's, um, they could, yeah. I don't know. It, De Silva was, uh, I mean, everyone on Stanford. It was De Silva and the the point guard and, and just everyone. That was a brutal game, um, kind of on par with some of the road games. But Stanford's just a real good team. That was maybe uh, the worst one, though, don't you think? Yeah, that was definitely like, like they I, just got trucked right out of the yeah game. from from the start because some of the other ones they've they've hung around hung they've done some thirty minutes or yeah. so but uh, this one they just it was it was over immediately <laughs> like two minutes into the game you were like shit this is wow ooh this is bad so but they're missing uh, you know as uh, as you mentioned we met, they're missing uh, missing one of their guys their key guy right De Silva. Well, he he played against Arizona. So Did he? Yeah. Ah, so. boo! I yeah, thought he was I, done for the year. I thought he had suffered some horrific injury. Classic Jeff not listening to God me. God damn it! I may have just said that. You might have. Sorry, I was trying to like look up something while you were talking. But yeah, he played against he he played against Arizona twenty minutes. Um, so obviously wasn't fully back. But um, he only ended up missing one game. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah, that everyone was like praying at half court for him. I don't. Uh, and he may have played more if he hadn't had four fouls. He had four fouls against Arizona, so 
maybe the 20 minutes wasn't injury limitation. Maybe it was just, you know, foul trouble or something. And yeah. He did still have 10 freaking free throws. <sighs> Shit. I was hoping that yeah. guy wouldn't play. Yeah, I know. I know. I was hoping he wouldn't too. Right? Cause <laughs> um, first time around he uh, didn't need to do much no. um, because he didn't really need to play uh that much well but um, he was i mean he was the main reason why like they obliterated us early like he i think of his 15 points i think he may have scored 13 in the first half well and yeah, yeah may he, have scored about nine of them in the first like six minutes he only so. played 13 minutes he was in foul trouble uh but he only played 13 minutes he yeah. got 15 points on seven shots so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's that's pretty and, good production yeah he also um, had four fouls in that game too so yep I don't know. They were, you know, it, I, I forgot. I haven't looked back at that box score, but, you know, if, I, mean, I, if I remember Terry, right, they, they were doing everything right. I mean, they were yeah, just Yeah, Tyrell like, Terry was not missing. You know, um, hit a bunch of yeah, threes. They, and, yeah, yeah. It, was, uh, it was a mess. It was a mess. I, I, yeah, I don't know what, what you get from that other than maybe they'll beat their ass again. They're just it's that bad of a, of a matchup. I don't expect Stanford to make 75% of their two-pointers no. again. No, I don't either. Um, and I, I wouldn't expect Stanford to hit 39% of their threes again, too. Because um, they're not that great of a three-point shooting team. So I no. um, so I, I, I think that the defense will come back to earth a bit. But also Stanford's defense is really, really, really good. Um, so I think that this game might look a little like the USC game. Yeah. I think there's there's a chance of that, but you know you or the Arizona game. Stanford you know. is really, I mean, they've leveled out though. You know, they're not they it, for a while there. It looked like okay, you know, this is a team that might might make a you know a real deal run right at you know maybe being the best team in the conference, um, and they have now lost four in a row. Now, granted, yeah, it's, it's to uh, it's at Utah, at Colorado, um, to Arizona State, to Arizona, so. Two of those losses are to very good teams in Arizona and Colorado. Um, one of those losses is at a place where everybody loses, which is Utah, um, and that was in overtime. And then the one that is sort of the head scratcher a little bit is is the Arizona State, but again, that was the one where De Silva didn't play. So, you know, I don't I don't know. Like, uh, you know, they've they've now lost uh, seven out of eight, which is you know sort of bonkers, um, but that includes two losses in overtime. A two point loss away to Cal, um, a five point loss at home to Oregon State. Yeah, it's it's you know most of their losses have been close. Um, so yeah, it's it's a little weird. They're they're probably looking to you know come on up to uh, come on up to Washington and get right, get a couple wins uh, against the Huskies and and against us, and um, you know get themselves back on you know the right side of the bubble or at least squarely back on the right side of the bubble. So. I mean, I, I guess you know they they force they're the best team at forcing turnovers in the conference. WCU, I think, is second or third. Yep. Um, they they also turn the ball over a lot too, though. So, um, which is again, weird. Yeah, it is weird. Um, turnovers could be a thing. Uh, Stanford is not a good rebounding team. Um, hopefully, WCU can get after it on the glass. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, Stanford actually misses some shots this time. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's where the old rebounding margin is uh, maybe not the best metric, you know, for people yeah. who love rebounding margin. So yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, they've uh, they're I guess they have been pretty good shooting overall from three in conference play. They, they've that's where they get most of their offense is just they make a lot of shots, but turn it over a lot. They don't shoot very well from three. They, yeah, they I mean they uh, they got they the they, they got the old Ernie offense Kent offense. offense. Yeah, they don't get offensive rebounds. They like there's they only get it the classic way, just making yeah. everything in miss. So they they're, they're um, the they're 25th overall in effective field goal percentage and yet their offensive efficiency is only 154th. So yeah. Classic Ernie offense. Ernie ball, classic Ernie ball. Um yeah, so I don't know, but so defense so it's it's going to come down to if the Cougs can score anything and stop like some I, shots. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I think that they'll play a lot better defense. I think so, uh, too. Um, especially, you're getting Stanford. Um, I mean, unfortunately, they get those extra days off because we're doing the Wednesday-Sunday crap. 
um, takes away your like it takes away a significant home advantage. I think. Yeah, when I think you're not so. Doing Thursday, Saturday. I think so. Um, it's yeah, it's set Sunday at five. Um, um, so that'll be a nice empty Pullman Arena. But um, yeah, so it, uh, Sunday at five. That's uh, main reason why uh, I decided not to try to make it out. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's uh, so hopefully I don't know. At WSU they've beaten better teams this year um at home than Stanford uh, obviously um so they uh it's not a game that they can't win um i mean still Kempom gives them a 37% chance to win that's of course with all of the bonton data in there um right. but uh but you know you know you never know um and he might play and he might play and uh maybe WSU goes wild from 3 like they've done a few times at home um, and maybe uh, maybe they just lock down on D. Uh, well, and you got to figure know. the inverse. So if you're like, you know, WCU struggles on defense on the road, well, you got to figure that's also maybe true of, you know, of, of a team like Stanford that forces right. a ton of turnovers. And, um, you know, one of the reasons, I mean, that game down in down at Stanford, I mean, they were just like, you know, they they like to, you know, the 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 colloquial description is, you know, in your shorts defense, that was in your shorts defense. Like it was like, there was no space. There was, there was nothing. I mean, it was, there were no passing lanes there. I mean, it was just tight, tight, and, tight, and tight. I, if I remember right, that I kind of what saved anything in that game was Henson going crazy from three at the end in meaningless garbage yeah. time. Otherwise yeah, it like, was bad. Like WSU would, it would have been a much worse score yep. from WSU. Bad, 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 bad. So, yeah, or you got to figure Stanford. Who, who knows how many points like Sensen gave up the other way? But. Probably a few. Yeah, probably a few. But yeah, I think the offensive number would have looked a lot worse than sixty-two on sixty-nine possessions if yeah. Henson didn't come in and make a bunch of garbage time threes. Yeah. But um, yeah, and so yeah, they were. But they have they've been uh, good on defense um, in Pac-12 play, but probably uh, not as good lately um in, in that stretch like they have some good ones but it hasn't been locked down every time so uh maybe um maybe that maybe wc will get get a good day honestly just make make outside shots and that makes every defense look bad <laughs> so, yeah uh it's it's all about randomness baby yes, when you're is. the when you're the underdog get that random in your favor yep Yep. Let's see. Anything else? I don't know. Baseball went one and three in their opening weekend. That was a bummer. Was it one and three? One and three, yeah. Uh, they, won well, the they won the one. first one. That was fun. That was great. Yeah, baseball back. Well, I hate Omaha, uh, baby. They like I don't know. It seems WSU always struggles in these early season road trips to uh any place teams warm. That, <laughs> it, that have been playing outside right. for months. Right. And WSU hasn't uh taken has been taking batting practice in the field house for right. you know two months right. and has snow on the field or taking whatever. grounders on the you know on the, on the frozen <laughs> you know or inside in the field house right yeah yeah so, yeah. Uh, yeah it's just, yeah, you're, it's that's yeah, one of those it, bummers yeah i always wsu's um hitting always seems to take longer to get going even that like every college team has like it's always pitching dominant at the start and then the bats heat up when it gets warmer. Um, it's just every baseball league is like that. Um, it, it, it always funny when I was, when I was in high school, like everyone, you know, in the actual regular season um, in high school would hit. And then like, once it got to summer ball, people would just be crushing everything. <laughs> like, cause they, they'd been hitting for months and they finally get the timing down and right. it's warm and your, your, your hands don't fucking hurt every time you, don't hit it exactly on the uh, on the sweet spot like it it's a but um yeah it's uh I, they always start slow but wc starts slower it always seems on offense and i it, it, i don't know and i just i hate these early season like it's because they have to do it they, can, they just don't really have another any choice like i mean right. they're, they're gonna have home games and they're gonna be possibly snowed out or they're going to be yeah. you know in really terrible weather yeah. and they're not getting it, anybody to come up to pullman and play right now yeah you're getting like swack teams and stuff yeah, yeah. i actually i haven't looked at their schedule we could be like total um uh, so they're going idiots. to hawaii next 
Yeah. So they they're going out to Hawaii, which you know that's a nice trip. So yeah, you know, hopefully they do okay out there, and then they're coming back and uh, they're playing another California school, uh, if I remember right. I looked at the schedule today, and now I'm forgetting, but. Um, I do know that they're going to they're they're playing in one of those like sort of neutral site uh you know tournaments where uh yeah. you know you go to Arizona right and you play yeah you they're know, playing four different Rutgers. School, yeah four different schools go out there and then you know they all play each other over the weekend and you know that's that's well, nice. on the schedule it just says Rutgers but I don't yeah so maybe it's like maybe it's like an actual tournament where you know who you play after that it's determined by who who wins but yeah. anyway. Yeah, they don't play in Pullman until March fifth. They host Niagara, mm. for, um, so and then they and then they got a Gonzaga school where it's then, just as cold as it is in Pullman. Yeah, Niagara, then Gonzaga, then Cal. So they have a they have a stretch of home games, but they uh, they get their first. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, eight, eleven on the road, or away from home. I should say they're not all on the road. Yeah. Oh, so the the fourth game was. Uh, at Northridge, I missed that one yesterday. Um, so they lost uh, one and two against Bakersfield, and and uh, lost one to yeah Cal State Northridge. Just zero and four, one and three against Cal State schools yeah. to start the year. Well, and it's it's tough to you know it's tough to read too much into it because um, you know so many things are like you know, you start getting deep into rotations, deep into bullpens when you play, you know, a four game series right out the gate, you know, starters probably aren't stretched out yet too much. And so, you know, a lot of experimenting taking place, I'm sure. So, yeah, these early season yeah. non-conference games aren't, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how much you read into them, but, um, you know, I don't think, I don't think it's worthwhile to read all that much into them. Yeah. Baseball is funny because you just you have these non-conference random games just intermixed, right? In the in the, the schedule, games, yeah. Especially yeah, the midweek Gonzaga games, whatever. They're actually doing. They're having a weekend against Irvine in April. Oh, that'll be and cool. Then, and then followed by uh, two games against Boise State. So, ah. um, I don't know. Maybe a lot of uh, may, are implementing the. Uh, I mean, that's not really what SEC teams do, yeah. but the late, the late gate, the late season um, non-conference stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Irvine, uh, that's going to, that's going to be the, uh, the Vince grippy classic right there. Oh yeah. 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 Wazoo and UC Irvine. I'm sure, I'm sure he'll be there for all three games. Yeah. And as I'm, as I'm looking online right now, it says, you know, tickets from $2 to $6 for that weekend. <laughs> Thanks. What to, a deal, man. I don't know. Is that stub hub? <laughs> or is that actually like WSU tickets? Nope. Those are actually WSU tickets. Yeah. Yeah, I'm you, gonna, if you get a group of ten, two dollars a piece. I, I I doubt there's much of a market on StubHub. For WSU <laughs> well, that's what. I was, but I'm like, I don't know, two to six dollars. Like WSU's not selling two dollar tickets, are they? Nope, they are. Yeah, they are. They definitely are. Was the last are. time you went to a WSU baseball game? They absolutely do. <laughs> like the youth you tickets. The youth tickets, tickets for like are twenty dollars. Yeah, you, the season tickets for baseball Man, are like. Maybe really we should cheap. like we do like a Coug Center trip, and I'll be like, hey, everybody, I'm buying everybody's tickets, you know, and then I'll just like drop a 20 and <laughs> buy 10 tickets they need that they need a beer garden like they, they have at the do. basketball game they 100 the percent baseball do. game they 100 baseball be way easier to position it to where you can see you can still see the field still, and yeah yeah they definitely need to do that but, i'm gonna be in i'm gonna be in california when we're playing uc irvine mm, well that's just a bummer for you and, yeah i know it's gonna be a real bummer Let's see. Do they have baseball? Let me see. Let me, let me, I'm checking real quick. Are they playing? Yes, they are playing baseball on the weekend of the spring game. So oh, that's maybe fun. I will have to buy a bunch of group tickets for Coug Center. Yeah. I'll go to the Utah what, the game. spring game is 20, 25th. 25th. Yeah, April 25th. So, yeah. the uh, Can we drink at – oh, so it's probably after. Or is it going to be during? Like, because the game's usually at 12. Yeah, like, so it would be, it's right after. 12. So the, uh, the baseball game's at 2. So you can go. Oh. We can go spring game, baseball game. It's gonna cut. How are we gonna, re, how it's we, gonna how cut into our tailgate, our, though? Yeah, how are we gonna do our live Cook Center podcast? Psh, we'll get. We'll talk to. We'll talk to uh, the baseball SID, and we'll we'll just set up in the stadium. <laughs> we'll record yeah. the podcast during the baseball podcast game. while we're watching the game. Hell yeah! Oh man, so what an about. idea, Jeff! Psh. As long as they let us drink, I'm or full of bring ideas. our beers in to do that. I know that's that's the one. Could, 
It's the one little uh, one little hiccup in this plan is we will have been drinking for you know six hours and then we're gonna have to stop to go watch a baseball game. We we'll just get hung over by the end of the podcast. Like oh, <laughs> my head hurts. So like all right, I'm just drinking some water so I can go back out to my office later. Yeah, I don't know. Baseball games are three hours long. I know. Um, we may not make it until the end. Yeah, I don't. I I would have no intention of making it. Go Cougs, but. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good game. Actually, it sounds better to me to go at like the sixth inning and watch the re- at rest of the game. Yeah, maybe like, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Record our podcast and go in. Yeah, maybe. Listen, you guys, welcome to Podcast Planning Talk. <laughs> we got Texas Cast. We got Podcast Cast. Hey, guys, I didn't know it was a pretty slow, pretty slow basketball week. Yep. Yep. And now I'm looking at my TV screen and Joe Tessitore is uh, – all excited about Wilder versus Fury too, and I'm like, mm, not a lot going on right now. Not a lot going on right now, but anyway, we anyway. done. Yeah, I think so. Uh, subscribe if you're listening. If you discovered us via this episode, uh, you are a unicorn. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you can subscribe. But you should subscribe if you are that unicorn. Um, I did watch uh, Inside Out with B today, um, mm. and the rainbow unicorn that movie. Um, is the star of the dreams. So love that movie. So you would be the star of my dreams if you uh, subscribe to the podcast. Yes. Um, also, uh, if you if you subscribe, rate us five stars, and then also leave us a little review uh, yeah you know, we like those. clever we like those. we like those um i don't know follow jeff at pod versus everyone on twitter uh follow me at the craig powers um yeah i think that's pretty much all the pluggy things we have yeah i think that's it go kooks craig go kooks